Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameJube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, we'll be doing something a little different. In this video, we'll be recapping the story and characters from our second concept restaurant, the Freddy Fazbear Funtime Farm Pizzeria. So recently, we've had some new subscribers join the channel. So this is a great way to get caught up with the previous videos. Or if you're a long time viewer, then have fun reliving all the previous character concept moments. So as always, I will just state that everything in these videos is purely fan made. So all the characters and the restaurant are our own creation and they're not really linked with the overall FNAF universe and FNAF lore. These are just a creepy cool story that we get to tell and we hope you enjoy the recap. And lastly, before we start today's video, do be sure to subscribe to GameJube as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Alrighty, well, let's get into the story recap of the Freddy Fazbear Funtime Farm Pizzeria. So our story starts off at the Freddy Fazbear Funtime Farm Pizzeria. A farmland themed pizzeria with multiple country themed attractions. There was the main stage, the wall pit and play area, the Funtime Party Stables, and the Snack Barn. So, Freddy's Funtime Farm was open from 1981 to 1994. A number of unfortunate incidents have happened in this time frame. Fazbear Entertainment shamefully paid off officials and victims to keep these incidents quiet. They were never made public until now. So, for our first character, we have Henry the Horse. Henry the Horse was a member of the Funtime Farm Band. His role up on stage was that of the guitarist. They would play along with the other band members as they sang their jolly tunes. The engineers designed Henry after the Clydesdale breed of horse. To fit the farm aesthetic, they gave Henry a straw hat, denim overalls and a big pair of rubber boots. Now, the strangest thing about all the animatronics at the Funtime Farm was their internal hardware. Each of these animatronic characters had a Simtech smart chip embedded in their skull. The Simtech smart chip was typically used for military grade projects. It gave computers and electronics the ability to learn and adapt. For some strange reason, this children's entertainment pizzeria got their hands on a few of these microchips. So now let's get into the incidents surrounding Henry the Horse. On one unfortunate day, Henry was performing up on stage when someone had spilled soda all around his feet. One of Henry's loose wires wiggled itself free and landed in the puddle of soda. All of a sudden, Henry received a massive electric shock. They began to heat up so much that their material skin started to burn off their body. Most of their fingertips burnt away, revealing their sharp metal claws. Fortunately for Henry's big rubber boots, most of their internal hardware was saved from being electrocuted. After the power was cut, Henry's body went into shutdown mode. They were then stored away in the maintenance room. When Henry was rebooted, unfortunately their memory was wiped. As they opened their eyes, the first thing they saw was all the photos of the different types of horses on the concept board. They saw all the horses running free in the open fields. The imagery of the horses running free in the wild awoke something in Henry. From that moment on, Henry was obsessed with getting outside. The only way Henry could escape was by unlocking the front doors. This meant that he would have to acquire the keys from the security guard. Seeing that the keys were attached to the security guard's belt, Henry would have to grab them off the player. But with those sharp metal fingers, they wouldn't exactly be gentle. Henry would clumsily slash the security guard until the keys were free from their body. So in an attempt to lure out the player, Henry had hidden some of the console buttons around the pizzeria. The player would have to roam around and find these buttons and place them back in the console. Henry would be searching for the player, so they had to move quickly and find them all. 
After they found all the buttons, they would then return to the safety of the security office and the night would be over. But with Henry roaming around, this task would prove to be pretty difficult. So for the next character, we have Daisy the Dairy Cow. She was of course the cow character in the farm animal lineup at the Funtime Farm. So her role up on stage was that of the tambourine player. She'd play alongside Henry and the other farm animals as they played their jolly tunes. But also in addition to being up on stage, Daisy was also the mascot for the snack barn. This was the area of the pizzeria that sold candy and a bunch of other different snacks and treats. Daisy would often be standing near the snack barn greeting all the customers and also be there to take pictures of as well. So the Fazbear engineers designed Daisy after the Holstein breed of cow. They gave her the signature black splotches and white fur. Daisy was a fairly popular character. She was considered to be a crowd favourite and probably the animatronic that had their picture taken the most. Daisy was also programmed to give hugs to any of the guests that wanted to receive them. Daisy was programmed to be a happy and loving character. Now Daisy, being a cow, did hold some significance as well. Seeing that the town surrounding the pizzeria was primarily a cattle raising community. But with that also does come some troublemakers as well. In this town amongst all the teenagers was the tradition of cow tipping. This cruel act always took place around graduation year and tended to be quite a problem. So when it came to Daisy, there was no exception. If anything, tipping over Daisy was considered to be the ultimate honour. Year after year, a number of troublesome high school graduates would tip over poor Daisy while she was on stage or near the snack barn. Over time, all these falls that Daisy took definitely did a number on all their internal circuits. A couple of teenagers snuck up behind Daisy and tried to push her over, but the old girl wouldn't budge. So they decided to grab onto her jaw and stomach and pull her down. Eventually they managed to rip off her jaw and tear away most of her stomach fabric. This exposed her battery terminals and wires hanging from her face. Daisy was quite confused as to why this kept happening to her. All she ever did was be friendly and hug as many guests as she could. When Daisy awoke once more, she came to the conclusion that she wasn't hugging enough people. That must have been why these terrible things have been happening to her year after year. Her internal smart chip rerouted her programming directive to hug overdrive. This meant Daisy would hug every single person she saw. And it so happens the first person she saw was our unfortunate security guard. With all those exposed wires and battery terminals, a hug from Daisy would deliver a fatal shock. So this gameplay segment would take place back in the security office. Throughout the night, Daisy would be stalking the player. Daisy would try to approach the doors and then give the player a fatal shocking hug. But the more the player closed the doors and rejected her hugs, the more Daisy would get angrier and angrier towards the player. This would make her become much faster and much more aggressive. This would definitely put the pressure on the player and prove to be quite the challenge. So for our third character, we have Oinky the Pig. Oinky the Pig was a cowboy themed character. So the engineers went with the classic pink colour scheme for Oinky. For their outfit, they dressed him in a cowboy hat, red bandana, belt and holster, and some shiny classic cowboy boots. On their hip was a colourful blue and green water pistol that they used as a part of their act on stage. Whenever it was someone's birthday, the establishment would do what they called the birthday quick draw. The employees would hand the special birthday guest a toy plastic revolver that was filled with a special foam dart. 
These darts had a special magnet in the tip that when fired would stick to Oinky and register with his senses and cause him to stop moving. So Oinky and the birthday guests would have a classic western standoff. If the guest wasn't quick enough, they would get sprayed with their water gun. But if the child was quick and got some shots in, the darts would register on Oinky's sensors and cause him to freeze and the guest would win a prize. Now apart from the birthday quick draw up on stage, Oinky also had another domain he was linked with. This was of course, the pig pen ball pit. But Oinky was very protective of their ball pit. They were obsessed with all the plastic mud balls and they couldn't have any of them misplaced. They knew exactly how many there were at all times, and if any of the balls accidentally fell out of the pit or went missing, this would cause them great distress. So one day the health inspector ordered the establishment to have the ball pit cleaned. So the pizzeria had a cleaner come over one night and vacuum all the balls into their cleaning truck. But Oinky didn't like this one bit. They thought that the cleaner was stealing the balls, so they attacked them to make them stop. After this attack on the cleaner, the manager ordered the security guard to pack up the ball pit for good. So in this gameplay segment, the player would have to grab armfuls of plastic balls and load them in the boxes at the front of the pizzeria. But whilst they did this, Oinky would be trying to stop them. The player could use the special magnet dart gun to stop Oinky in his tracks for a few moments. The night would be over when they packed away all of the balls. But Oinky would make this task anything but easy. Next up is our fourth character, and this character is Bruce the Goose. Bruce was quite the unique looking animatronic. The engineers designed him after the classic white geese, but their standout feature was their long extendable neck. Their neck was able to extend and retract back to its regular size. This feature was typically used for serving food or presents to guests. Employees would place a tray of pizza and sodas in their bill and let Bruce extend their long neck over to the guests and place it on their table. Alongside serving food and drinks, Bruce also played in the band when it was time to perform. So in the band we had Henry on guitar, Daisy on tambourine and Bruce who played the harmonica. They would set up the harmonica on a stand as Bruce would put their bill up to it and play. Another special activity that was only unique to Bruce was Bruce's golden goose egg. The employees would store the guest present in a large oversized gold spray painted egg. So as we all know when the doors close and the restaurant is locked up for the night, the characters tend to walk around and have a mind of their own. When it came to Bruce, it was their curious nature that was always getting them into trouble. This curious nature paired with their long extendable neck often landed them in tricky situations. They would always stick their head into many vents and openings. Bruce just had to know where all these secret places led to. Sometimes when the pizzeria would open in the morning, employees would have to pull him out from being stuck. So on one unfortunate night, Bruce wandered into the kitchen. Bruce has never seen the kitchen before. With this new area and all the new things to come with it, Bruce went into curiosity overload. They eventually found the open smoke extraction vent. As they stretched their neck through the vent, they would soon realize what was at the end. Unfortunately, Bruce went a little too far and drove their bill straight into the sharp metal blades. When they removed their head, not much of their bill was left. Bruce has never had a surprise like that before. 
With this rush of excitement and fear, they decided to investigate every little thing in this kitchen. By the morning, the employees found a severely damaged and torn up Bruce. They decided to store them away for the time being until they could get them repaired. Whilst Bruce was stored away, they became increasingly curious about every little thing they came into contact with. They tore apart stuffed toys, other spare parts, and anything else that interested them. After they discovered all they can, there was still one final thing they never knew. What exactly were these strange beings that were always in the pizzeria? They called them guests, but what exactly were the guests? Are they robots just like them? Or are they large living toys? Bruce had a burning desire to find out what was inside those beings. That night they would find out exactly what these beings were. Unfortunately for our poor security guard, Bruce only knew one way of finding out what objects were. So Bruce would approach the door from either side. As soon as they did, the player would need to close them immediately. But one thing the player would soon figure out is that Bruce can also access the vent above them with their long extended neck. So the player would also have to look above them to quickly shut the air vent. So now the player has to manage both doors and the air vent above their head. Whilst juggling all these attempts to enter the security office, the player might just get overwhelmed. So now we come to our last character at the Freddy Fazbear Funtime Farm. And this character is Duke the Dog. Duke the Dog was of course a canine themed Freddy Fazbear animatronic. They had a mixed colour scheme with various browns and whites. The engineers modelled Duke after the Border Collie breed of dog. Their outer material was similar to the other animatronics. But Duke's skin had more of a fur like quality. Another special addition was their bushy brown tail. Now one feature that Duke has that all the others don't was that of two little companions that accompanied them on stage. Duke was a part of a trio with their two little pups named Patch and Spot. Patch and Spot were essentially two animatronic puppets that would attach the Duke's back. They both only had a torso, two arms, and a head. The trio typically comes together when they're performing on stage. As for Duke and his pups roll up on stage, they were the lead singers. They would sing a number of cheerful birthday songs with the whole gang up on stage. Also, Patch and Spot would pop up from behind Duke and provide backup vocals. The establishment definitely made great sales on all of their merch. The most popular seller being the Patch and Spot hand puppets. But eventually in the later years, Fazbear Entertainment made the choice to remodel the puppies. But this would prove to be a very bad mistake. In recent times, the popularity of Patch and Spot has begun to drop. Freddy Fazbear Entertainment suggested to remodel them and make them more hip and appealing for the modern audience. So their old material skin was removed and then replaced with a much more hip update. When they were returned to Duke, he wasn't happy at all. Whatever these two things were, they weren't his puppies anymore. The employees have taken them from him. From that day on, Duke never felt the same. Week after week, performing with these two imposters took its toll on poor Duke. He missed the original patch and spot and desperately wanted them back. So one night, Duke did something drastic. He ripped off both their fabric skins and went to replace them with the next best thing. Duke tore through the locked merch cabinet and retrieved the patch and spot hand puppets. 
They then crudely tore off the skin of Patch and Spot and replaced them with the puppets. The staff decided to lock away both Patch and Spot in the security office to keep them safe until the repairman could come back and work on them again. Once again, the employees have taken Duke's puppies away from him. He didn't know if he was ever going to see them again. He had to get them back, no matter what. And the only person standing in Duke's way was the security guard. So for this gameplay segment, the player would have both the vandalized Patch and Spot puppets in their possession. Duke would appear quite frequently from both the left and right sides. As soon as they see Duke, they would need to close the doors immediately. If the player slips up and lets Duke pass the doors, then they would have one failsafe. The player would have to quickly throw the Fazbear plushie through the opposite door, and Duke would chase it out of the room. Throughout the night, Duke would get more and more aggressive. On some rare occasions, Spot and Patch would spring to life regardless of being plugged in. When this happens, the player would quickly need to grab them and throw them into a cabinet drawer. If the player failed to guard the puppies, then the night wouldn't end very well for them. So that covers all the characters and the story recap for the Freddy Fazbear Funtime Farm. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing, as it helps out a lot, and it is greatly appreciated. And as always, let us know in the comment section down below which member of the Funtime Farm was your favourite. Alrighty everyone, well, until the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.